se lo digo. La mayoría de Okay. Uh, so today, uh, yesterday we've been seeing that she. Um, so yesterday we've been seeing some uh, present type of how to prepare presentations and how to use generative AI for our presentation and things like that. So today we're going to see the also the project the project presentation part. Uh, what is different from yesterday's presentation is now we're going to focus more on the content rather than the structure and the theme of the PowerPoint. Uh, what are we supposed to include in order to present our project or the final presentation? So let's say that you've dedicated time to a project. Um, wait, let's, let me start the display. Yeah, you have dedicated time to a project and uh, some products even maybe for a company or for a client. So what is next? You're supposed to present your project in a way that people are going to understand what you mean or what you First one is it goes for your project. So what, uh, what I'm thinking is first we need to go over the, the idea of our project first before starting the presentation or before starting to prepare the content. We should have we, sh we should state the goals and the other things first in order to make the flow um, perfect. So the first one is here, it says use smart goal setting method, right? So what do we mean by smart for goal setting? Uh, it's an abbreviation for every uh, for every word, like S-M-A-R-N-T. S stands for specific and measurable. Um, A attainable are relevant and timeline. So what do we mean by that? Let's over them. Specific means when setting your goals, we need to be clear and specific about what you want to achieve in the end. So that um, maybe we feel like if you're starting to say, like, let's say they go for my project after, you know, after going over your project, after doing some projects and still you're not very sure what the project goal is, you're not very sure what to write or what to put down, then it means that you're not that ready to, you know, to do that project or to present that, pro that project since the goal, making this, uh, making the goal specific is the main and the major thing to start. So we need to put um, the, our goal in a specific way. And then uh, it needs to be measurable. What do we mean by measure, measurable again? We need to use metrics. What metrics will you, will you use to determine if you meet the goal? So let's just say that we put some goals for our project and start to do some jobs and we just continue doing them and we don't know how impactful they are or how a part of our goals are we are we doing or succeeding at succeeded at doing so if we're not going to measure our goal i mean our the progress of our project or the the project the progress towards the goal then it means that we're not that we're not being that careful or uh it might be in in the middle of the project it might be we're not doing that much towards the goal but we're not noticing that it's lacking so many things so in order to measure how fast that is going, how good we're doing towards achieving our goal, we need to put a measure. Uh, actually, measures can be measures can be uh, mostly in number and uh, sometimes actually mostly in number. Let's say that if, uh, if, if the idea of the project or the uh, your project or your business is to get or to give uh, to give like, to sell water for 100 people per month. Let's say it's just an, an example. So if you sold, uh, how, how much do I sold? Do, do I sold out? Like if it is 50, if it is if it is 50, it means that we have achieved half of the project. So we need to we need to measure or we need to put in metrics in order to measure the project. The other one is is it attainable? So um, most of the time, as you know, it's we feel like we're most of the people are ambitious at the beginning of uh, doing some projects or uh the like assignments or everything so we need to carefully uh check if it is attainable or not so do we have the resource to achieve the goal so by resource we might it might be human resource budget wise mm, do, do we have enough connection in order to achieve the goal so is that attainable with the resource that we have at this time so this is really an important concept to consider while putting some goals and it is relevant of course so what do we mean by relevant again is that uh, what is the does the goal align with the business or company goals? If you're doing this for a company or for your business or something, what is the idea or the goal of that company? The, 
the part that you're working for what is their goal uh so it, it might be achieving more many or like doing some service for the environment for the society so depending on the goal or the idea of the company we should measure if our goal is relevant or not uh, and then the timeline of course again it's somehow related with the measurable uh, part so we need to put some time timeline or target days for deliverable so in order to achieve the whole goal or the final aim of the goal so what should we need what should we do at the first at the beginning so we might uh, classify the our goals in uh in phase maybe phase one phase one of our project phase two of our project phase three of our project so so this phase should be uh concluded or should we should come to an end by this timeline and that the second phase will come to an end by this timeline we it might not be achievable all the time due to many circumstances or parameters but at least we know that we're going slow or we're going good we're uh, somehow near to uh, near to our goals or not so we need to put a timeline for our goal for our goals so doing those like having the goal uh, and preparing a goal that can be achieved in within our resource then we can go to the presentation and or revising those concepts we can just go and um yeah we can start the pre the presentation but of course there is a problem this is not that man uh, that mandatory i mean depends so if you're starting the project or if you're starting to do some solution based on some problem statement then it's good to know the problem statement so uh, you don't forget that now we're we're, try, we're trying to focus at the end of the day we're trying to focus how to present the problem the solution that we propose for the people or for the for our audience right so we need to keep in mind if if we have some problem statement that we have uh, started uh, you know started to do our projects from then it's good to state them or to outline them well because showing the problem statement for the audience it shows the again it shows the audience that how important this issue is how important our project is so we need to outline our problem statement so uh the outline the pain points you want to solve uh, and emphasize how your project or the product or service works to address their pain points and maybe so we need a solution this kind of solution we can put the solution briefly then so if there is a problem in the case or if there is a problem that we have started from or that we have noticed then it's a very uh, good uh, culture to put our problem statement there and then if we have uh, the problem statement and if we put it i mean most of the time sorry most of the time we of course have a problem statement but i, I just say that it, it is not mandatory because uh sometimes you might do something out of your uh, like if you're if you're supposed to do something or if you if you if some people told you to do something maybe your bosses then you're going to do that so not every time we have the problem statement but most of the time we have that and mentioning problem statement is very crucial and important part of presentation of course even a um, crucial part of giving a solution for something if we have a problem and if we give some solution for that so it's considered as a success so it's important uh, part then let's go to uh, laying out our project plan so now we have a clear plan i mean we uh, we have a clear goal and we just put it some problem problems that that is um, for, for our audience, we just put it some problems. So here is the project plan. Or now we're going to describe what we've done in order to solve that problem and in order to achieve our goal. So here there, there is the introduction, the body and the conclusion. Of course, the, intro, the introduction is um, will contain things like what is our presentation about? What are we going to propose? Just like the introduction. And then there's the body. Because I think if you're going to mention the problem statement and other things, we're not supposed to put much time on the introduction part. And then there is the body here, the full project details and everything relevant. What, is, what challenge do I, do I have? Um, am I going to actually have a phase in order to achieve my uh, goal, my projects or in order to finish my project? How did I, how have I done all the steps? Um, what resource have I used in order to achieve it or to do the project? what source i mean everything that you feel is relevant and should be included so should be included on the body part and of course there's the conclusion part here we're going to sum up our presentation with the key takeaways so this this point uh, like you can take this we can we're going to solve the problem this way is part of the conclusion so here i'm going to put some recommendation for uh, it's 
more of a recommendation and also something that we're supposed to use while preparing a presentation. The first one is we need to keep our slide short. So um, it's not a PDF or it's not something that uh, that are uh, that people are going to read it. It is PPT is just or PowerPoint is just an initial point for the presentation. So you need to keep it short, the slide short and precise and less text and more visual. So if, depending on our presentation or on the on our project, actually, we need to put maybe data visuals or maybe short videos or something like that. So we need to make it less text and more visuals. This help, this helps the the flow of the presentation by making the by making it interactive uh, and not that boring. And the other main point is stick to what matters. So most of the time, if you notice the presentation, people uh, by any means or by any chance they will start talking about other issues, like other issues inside the presentation. So like that is not something recommended. We should focus on things that we want to put for the audience. I mean, like wasting our time talking about something related with our presentation. We, at the end of the day, we'll, we will be left out without mentioning um, something that is very important to be mentioned. And also we should tell a story. I mean, it is, it is not just a presentation. Try to relate it with human experience, uh, with the real world experience. So rather than making it just a presentation, so it is going to be um, something interactive and something uh, related with the real world. So next, uh, Yaya is going to continue about uh, our VM, I think. So my presentation will come to an end here. Thank you for listening. Yeah, yeah, you can go. Uh, before that, if you have any question, yeah. Sorry for not mentioning. Okay. Uh, who Hi. was the one with the uh, Gitteri? Hi, Gitteri. Uh, Gitter. will, you kind, will you kindly go back to the to the to the slide part with the smart? Huh? Kindly, briefly. Smart. Okay. Okay. Here, you yeah. you need me to describe things on this. Okay. Go um, on. Just next. Next page. Okay. Please. Attainable, relevant, and timeline. Okay. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Maybe other questions. Anyone oh, with some question or confusion? Okay, uh, Gitteri or any other people, person? Okay, it's, it's not directly related to this, but uh, we never received the the slides for yesterday's and I think before yesterday's sessions. Eh? Come again, we never saved. Uh, we we never saved received. Never... Are okay, these slides, the presentation. These... Yeah, okay. the presentation. Oh, actually, all I think all of the slides are included on the technical document. Have you checked that? Yeah. Okay, okay. Technical document. Yeah, yeah. It's already Thank there. I, so we're going to upload this presentation to to that page. So no worries. To that folder. Okay. Other question? Okay. So yeah, yeah, you can go on. Okay, thank you, Radit. Uh, let me just share my screen. We can stop it now. Is my Screen visible? Yes. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so today we will talk about RBM reporting or result-based management uh, reporting. Uh, so what's what's RB reporting? Uh, it's a systematic methodology focusing on articulating achieved outcomes and their impacts on intended uh, object objectives right so we basically focusing on the outcomes or the outputs instead of uh, finishing or completing activities uh, further it would involve analyzing impact 
of those uh, outputs on the uh, intended goal, right? Uh, so what's its importance? Uh, how resulted result-based reporting drives strategies uh, for decision making and resource allocation by providing uh, evidence of the program effectiveness. So this is basically what uh, result-based reporting is. Uh, we will uh, also see its purpose. How can we uh, do or write the RB reporting? We will discuss all those one by one. So the, the first that we're going to see uh, is that what are the core elements of RB reporting? Um, as Rodit explained, uh, each goal has to be smart, right? That means it has to be specific and measurable. So for the for measuring a given goal, uh, we need to put uh, uh, result metrics. So uh, that would be the structure framework highlighting outputs, outcomes, indicators, uh, baselines, and targets for uh, systematic uh, tracking and assessment. What does that mean? It means we have to uh, present our metrics in such a way that uh, what do we achieve related to the uh, baseline, which means we need to compare the targets in the baselines for each indicator. Uh, how do we actually results compare to the expected results? Uh, we need to compare these two. And also, uh, what were the reasons for over or, or underachievements? If there is um, overachievement, why that happens? And if there is underachievement, why that happens? We need to uh, consider this regarding to the the, um, the metrics or the measures. Uh, so the, the next one is continuous review. Uh, as we saw uh, on Wednesday, uh, strategies for RBM, they, they were planning, monitoring, and uh, evaluation or uh, adaptive learning, right? So we need to continuously review our activities, our goals, etc. So the importance of ongoing assessment of indicators, assumptions, and risks uh, will ensure the relevance and accuracy of the uh, reported result. So we need to consider or we need to focus on uh, the uh, monitoring. And the last one is adaptive reporting, which means that there might be a reporting in the middle of the project or uh, according to the plan, since we have uh, a timeline by the end of those timelines, we need to uh, address or report uh, our results. So in that process, documenting might change uh, when it compares with the uh, baseline uh, or the target uh, that will maintain transparency and adapt strategies as needed. So we need to uh, report now and then. Um, any unfor uh, unforeseen problems or opportunities that might require new strategies or uh, redesign of your initiative. So depending on your report or revision, uh, some of the uh, goals or strategies might change over time. So these are the three core elements of uh, RB reporting. Uh, what's its purpose? Uh, what, what's the purpose of uh, reporting that that's for communicating the impacts of the project right so the rb reporting serves as a means to communicate uh, the effectiveness of the project to stakeholders um, or donors uh, that will uh, be securing ongoing uh, support or resources so we have to communicate our uh, project result uh, uh, on the impacts of that project. And uh, the second purpose is for accountability, uh, which means when we report, 
uh, we are demonstrating accountability to the uh, governing boards, the stakeholders, etc. Uh, that would be showing case your transparency on the uh, project's output or outcomes. And the last one is uh, informing uh, decision making. That means when we uh, report our results, the, the, govern, the governing body or the stakeholders will uh, make decisions. So how the result uh, based reporting informs decision making process for project management and stakeholders. So these are the uh, main uh, purpose of uh, RB reporting. So how can we write uh, the, the report, right? So as Reddit said, it has to be storyteller, right? To do that, we need uh, to highlight the achievements, which means you need to describe the achieved outcomes and successes, uh, indicators to provide a comprehensive overview of the project impact. You have to highlight the achievements and also you need to uh, present your performance analysis, which means uh, the comparison between the actual result with the expected outcome. That will identify uh, areas of success uh, and also uh, areas where uh, improvement uh, has to be done. So this uh, performance analysis has to be reported. And the next one is quantifying your success which means provide, you have to provide uh, quantifiable data against the baseline uh, to uh, substantiate the project's achievements. Uh, we will see that the, how we will present, I mean, the, the template that we're going to use for RMB reporting. Uh, and the next one is uh, you have to be visual, right? You need to present your results uh, using visuals. Uh, testimonials and other illustrative elements to enhance the presentation of the result. And the other one is uh, explaining variance. If there is a deviation from uh, the original plan, you need to uh, present that, which means you need to explain for discrepan discrepancies in, in results to inform uh, future strategies and actions. And lastly, you need to identify opportunities. That means you need to highlight unforeseen issues or opportunities for the project enhancement and innovation. So you need to uh, include or uh, you need to highlight uh, this for to have uh, a storyteller uh, story report. Uh, so when we do the uh, reporting we have we need to tell the success story mainly right so the the, the first thing you need to do is uh, you need to uh, present the process overview which means you have to explain uh, how the results were achieved to provide the insights into more effective project strategies how did we get at this point achieving this uh, you have to uh, explain that. And the next one is learning and adoption, uh, which means you need to identify the lessons learned and also potential opportunities for uh, a bigger application uh, for the success of uh, the project. And the other one is you need to recognize the partnerships or any collaborations, which means you, you need to acknowledge the contributions of uh, partners and stakeholders to the project success. And lastly, uh, data integrity, which means you need to ensure uh, data sufficiency and reliability to accurately depict the uh, project impact. Um, yeah, um, if there are any questions, please raise your hands. Uh, is it clear so far? Any question? Yeah, Gitari, go on. <clears throat> yeah, hello. Yeah. Uh, in in the assignment, task four, 
Okay. Task four is uh, actually this is the assignment for task four, and uh, the thing here is that this is a, a project that has not really been actualized on ground. Yeah. And this is like uh, generalizing it. It's like a feedback form of a thing of the project, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so how are we supposed to tackle that? Bearing in mind, this is something that has actually not been actualized. H how do we get like the data to compare with what we proposed? Uh, okay, um, I think I will I will touch that a little bit later. Uh, okay. This presentation, as I said on uh, Wednesday, it's for um, RBM for uh, a company right some of the the concepts might not be applied for your project right? okay, okay. starting from planning up to uh, evaluation uh, things might not be the same uh, like there is no data collection right there is no uh, role and responsibility division uh, there is no stakeholder even right so this is a general um, framework for uh, any project in a company. So having this, you have to adopt this to your needs for this project. Uh, for your project, I will I will touch some of them uh, at the end. Is that clear? Nitari, is that clear? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. If he, ooh, it's hard to pronounce. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's if you are. Anyway, you um, are. yeah, my suggestion or question is in line with what Gitri here said. Um, it's a little bit blurry. I I don't know. I can't comprehend exactly. I don't know if it's possible to get. A, a sample like different examples on um, results-based reporting because I really can't comprehend it's almost it's too elaborate for me that's my take thank you all right thank you yeah as I said uh, we will come to that just give me a sec all right thank you all right any other question all right let's continue then uh, so, uh, effective reporting, uh, how can we make our RBM report very effective? So, uh, there are almost five which are related to the uh, core elements above. You need to have uh, or you need to put clear context and strategies in your report and also meaningful results when you put your metric uh especially for the uh, the pis or performance performance indicators they have to be uh, meaningful and also uh, validate uh, valid and re reliable for performance information uh, and also accomplish uh, reported against the expected results you need to compare your accomplishment uh, against the expected results or the, the baseline, uh, uh, you need to also include those. Um, also, you need to demonstrate uh, capacity to learn and adopt, right? Mm -hmm. In your report, uh, as I said, this strategy is cyclic, right? So in that report, you need to uh, uh, demonstrate uh, capacity for adoption, for learning or for uh, evaluation. Uh, having this in mind, uh, we will uh, structure our report in that format, uh, which we will uh, see it later. So basically, uh, by presenting credible, reliable, and balanced information, uh, this will enable uh, to produce an effective result-based report. Right? Uh, you need to have a credible and reliable uh, results that uh includes also balanced information which means the good and the bad you have to balance them if there are 
uh, uh, drawbacks, you have to include them. Uh, so to have an effective report, you have to also highlight uh, challenges uh, uh, and areas of insufficient and poor results. Basically, it means you need to reflect the good and the bad uh, in your report. All right, uh, so if those are the uh, effective uh, reporting uh, strategies, what is the, the uh, standard for quality uh, in your RDB reporting? So those standards include completeness, which means you have to ensure all relevant uh, information is included uh, to provide a comprehensive understanding of the project outcomes. It has to be complete. And also balanced reporting. You need to present both positive and negative outcomes to maintain objectivity and uh, credibility. Uh, the other one is uh, well, it has to be consistent. Uh, one section has to be consistent with the others. There must be a coherence. So ensuring coherence and alignment between uh, different sections uh, of the report for clarity and coherence. Uh, the other is uh, substan substantiveness and reliability, which means uh, you need to give a reliable uh, and robust data uh, or information to enhance the uh, credibility and trustworthiness of uh, your report. Uh, basically, it means you have to be honest with your findings. Uh, you have to report both positive and uh, negative outcomes. Uh, lastly, it, it has to be clear. Uh, clarity, ensuring information is presented in a clear and uh, understandable manner for uh, the stakeholders. Uh, so uh, how can we put all this uh, into a report? That, that's the question. Uh, basically, this is the format for uh, RRP uh, reporting. Now, the first thing you need to do is uh, you need to uh, write your outcomes. And the outcomes might have multiple outputs, right? Uh, so it, it's like a hierarchy. You start from the activities, you list your activities, and their status during the uh, presentation or during the reporting. And then what were the, the performance indicators? The, this is the one that you need to focus on in your project and also the activities. For example, in task one or task two, uh, you uh, outline something and during your interim submission, you write the, the status, right? on uh, saturday what was activity for was it completed or not that means is it uh, on track is it partially or fully you have to uh, put that here and then to attain the the uh, different activities you associate them with uh, a matrix uh, or uh, performance indicators and then what was the baseline? And then what, 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 what's the target? And then you assess them, you compare them, right? The, the target is the one that you achieved at the uh, time of uh, presentation. This is uh, on output one. You, may, you might have uh, multiple outputs. Uh, in that case, you have to uh, list them output one, output two, and this, outputs my result an outcome right and different outcomes will have an impact so there is a hierarchy between uh, the activities the outputs the outcomes and the uh, uh, overall impact of that project uh, so this is the uh, structure and i believe you have this uh, document uh, from un uh, there is a good example of a uh, result-based report. Uh, so here is the overall uh, 
the overall progress at one time right and that's the for the uh, outcome uh, you need to express that or summarize it here and then your output one uh, you have to put it here for example in this case uh, output one was strengthen national capacity to uh, develop implement human resource development plan for safe motherhood within the national human resource development plan so this is the uh, output right and for those in this case we have two pis or performance indicators uh, the first one is a human resource development plan for safe motherhood development and the second one is number of uh, people trained so the baseline these are the indicators basically right number of people trained that that's one indicator and the second indicator this one looks like quant uh, qualitative but this one is quantitative so you may when you measure something it it, it will fall either qualitative or quantitative uh, but all our matrices will be numeric so uh, the, the the baseline in this case is comparison of new development plan with the with the old development plan that that's the baseline uh, here the number of people trained the baseline is zero there was no one uh, trained on the uh, uh, resource development plan for safe motherhood and then during the reporting uh, assessment in three provinces of hr uh, situations in regarding to safe uh, motherhood so they they have done this and also 30 men and 70 women professionals trained that means from zero to this number so this is measurable right and then uh, the inline data at the end uh, you 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 put your uh, uh, comparison or what you at, attain at the end. So, human resource development development plan is developed, and uh, the report is available. So this report has been done, and it's available for uh, presentation if you are asked. And the, the, for the second one, at the end of the year, two target was achieved. Uh, which means it's from here. Uh, so the uh, next one for your output two, you put the, uh, this is basically the, the, the plan, right? And then uh, this is what was achieved. You, you have to put it in a summary. And then you have to list your PIs and then the baseline and then the target, uh, and the, the final uh, uh, metric, the final metric. So this is how you uh, present your uh, RB uh, report, RB report. So if it, it, it might continue, right? Output three, output four, um, et cetera. And if there is another um, outcome, this is like one outcome or uh, out of the project, this is, one outcome which has two outputs and then different outcomes will result in uh, impact in the, the uh, whole project so this is uh, how you report uh, your rb i hope this makes it clear so basically it means in your project uh, you have to identify the the outcomes and what uh outputs outputs result that outcome you need to identify them right and for the kpis you have to identify for a specific uh, output uh, you have to identify the the kpis is that clear guitar is the is it clear now all right Hello, yes. Uh, any questions? Yeah, it, you just need to get the, the whole idea and then try to 
put uh, your project into this uh, format. Yeah, go on. Okay, I want to ask if this slide will be updated today on the Google yeah, yeah. Drive. I, I will I will upload it immediately. Did you get the, the slide on Friday? Yes. Yeah, it, it will be uh, in the Google Drive, in the right. uh, technical folder, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I believe you have this, this, this uh, documentation uh, from the reference. You, you can go through that. This is basically what I have discussed. Yeah. All right. Um, if there is no question, uh, we can stop now. Uh, have a good evening or good day. All right. Thank you. Oh, sorry. All right, thank you very much. Bye.